very good afternoon to you. Matt Benny Walls here on another vlog about composition. What is it? This elusive thing called composition. Um, within the context of photography, um, somebody once said to understand a painting, you need to sketch it. And I, I never forgot that. As a kid, I loved, I loved drawing. I loved copying paintings. I loved drawing faces. I loved understanding the distance between the eyes, the nose, and then the mouth to the nose, to the bottom of the nose, and then putting things into a sort of ratio, I suppose. Not just that, I, you know, I, I love drawing all sorts of things. Um, and you know that that was that was a great pleasure for me. Um, composition within photography. There are photographers, William Eggleston. I mean, I've seen footage of him, and he's just walking along, and he just goes junk with a camera. You know, he's not even looking. Sometimes he sort of does loosely, but he's not really looking at the edges of his frame and taking time to compose. Where is that rectangle going to go? How How is he going to bring the elements of his subject matter into that, into that rectangle to make them look the way he wants or the way somebody would want um, to, to look at them in, in, in an aesthetically pleasing way? Now, for me, composition is all about shapes and putting those shapes into some sort of order, a balanced order that works with my brain. It's not just shapes, but it's also light. You know, if there's, if there's a lot of light and shadow areas, it's also about bringing those into play and putting those in the right order as well. Now, what's the right order? That's, that's another, well, it's not another question. That, that's the big question. But for me, Look, <laughs> this might sound a little bit weird. So let's just say, to begin with, most cameras aren't 100%. Some are. A rangefinder typically isn't. Um, you you know, I've never taken an image and thought, oh, that's way off what I saw in the viewfinder. No, but they're not exact. They're not 100%. Um, I know that some cameras are 100%, but it takes an awful lot of technology to get a 100% viewfinder. The Nikon F3 is 100%, but most SLRs aren't. They're around about 93%-ish. They're thereabouts. It's not so much of a difference that it's going to jar when you see the image back. Um, far, no, not at all. But you can get the basic, you can get the important essence of that image, even with 92%, 93% or whatever. Um, and you can certainly get it with the with a hundred percent. I learned, I think I learned composition with my hundred percent F three Nikon F three camera. I knew it was a hundred percent, and those those four lines, that rectangle, was very very important to me. That was that was my vision. That was how I saw. That was how I was, and literally, you know, maybe this is a bit weird. I don't know. But I spent a long time, not even photographing, but I, will, I maintain this to this day, that when you hold a camera up to your eye, your dominant eye, what you're doing, literally, I mean, you can, I can point this camera at anything, anything, anything as banal as the pens in the glass in front of me or my coffee cup in front of me, the bottle of ink just to the right of it. I can point my camera literally at anything, at this phone that I'm videoing this vlog on. I can look at it and I can compose what looks right. I can point to the corner of the ceiling and the, and the corner sink and what looks right, what looks balanced. Does it look perfect in the middle? Hey, maybe. Does it 
does it look better offset? Do I bring in the rules of the the, the um the rules of thirds? What looks right? What looks balanced? What looks right to my mind to my eye? Um, it's about geometry. I mean, <laughs> and geometry is a massive thing for me. It's 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 absolutely crucial. You can have the most interesting subject matter in the world, and for me, if you haven't got the geometry right, it doesn't. It do, you know it doesn't look right somehow. The geometry of any image is is really important. There are exceptions to the rule. I mean, the, they just are. But generally speaking, when I'm taking a photograph, geometry plays a very large, you know, three point six one eight. It 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 plays a huge part every time I. Every time I press the shutter, um, you can learn it. You can literally walk around with a camera. Don't put any film in it if it's a film camera. Don't press the shutter if it's a digital camera. And you can walk around and point it at anything you like, and start. Your brain will start to assimilate what is in that viewfinder, that edge, what is falling in there. If I move a little bit further back, if I, how am I balancing light and dark? How am I balancing those shades within that rectangle to produce an aesthetically interesting image? I think I can make an interesting imaging, uh, image out of the corner scene of the ceiling here or the corner of the frame of the picture. If I, if I use a little bit of depth of field, if I, use the right lighting and I get the geometry right the right field of view and the right the right the right way of putting that shape within that rectangle I can I can I can produce an image out of it anything if you if you turn the television on if you've got a freeze frame or something if you look at a ball, a football flying into the right-hand corner of a of a goal somewhere, and you just freeze frame it. You know, first first you've got the player. Maybe you've got a wide shot. Maybe you've got a slightly you know fifty mil shot, or you know a, a standard shot. Where are those players? Where how do they fill the frame? Now, it, that's maybe not a good example, but. It kind of is an okay example because the ball is here, you've got players here, the cameraman wants to show you who's in what position and who's moving forward, who's making runs, who's making... And so you're getting a sense of what it is maybe to stand there, then there are some close-up shots to get the goal, you know, the expression of... You know, it's all... It, if that's all off off kilter, maybe the tripod isn't straight and it's all it jars. It just looks bad. It looks it doesn't look right. And for me, there's right and there's not right. It's as simple as that. Some photographers don't care about it. Maybe it's you know their kind of signature a little bit. Um, for me, William Eccleston is a prime example of that. I'm not sure what his thinking is, but for whatever reason, even though I think he does have a, a very good understanding of of composition, it's almost as though he's saying, when I take a photograph, I'm not interested, or it's not, it's not a critical thing to me. And that's part of how I shoot. I shoot the banal, and I just, you know, I don't care if it's a bit out of focus, just a zump, you know, one image, that's it. I don't care. Don't want to have to decide with two images, three images, which one's better. No, just jump. And 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 that's kind of how he does it. It's. I mean, it's rightly or wrongly. I don't know. You know. Do you like it? Don't you like it? He does it the way he likes it, and that's what works for him. 
Um, for me, I can't take a photograph like that. I mean, I'm just not remotely, you know, interested apart from anything else in taking a photograph like that. For me, you know, it, it, there's something that works and there's an awful lot that doesn't. And I think you train your eye and you train your brain literally by shooting anything, the most banal sub subject matter you can think of, um, if need be, you know, and just walk around and practice what what looks right within that rectangle. Nothing more, nothing more scientific or, or difficult about it than that. It's just training the eye how it how it works, how it comes into line. Yeah, you know, will my f let, let, let's put aside focus and depth of field or anything like that. Just components falling within your viewfinder and the edge of your rectangle there's four lines what looks good what what looks what what doesn't look good try and find i won't say the optimum angle of view or anything like that no just you know some things you don't have any choice about because you know you're if you're photographing a building you can't go up three floors to get clipped no just what is there put a put a rectangle around it and see what is how it how it best looks even if it's far away how does it best look simple as that and within no time at all you will you i think you'll be taking you know we've all we've all sort of seen the photographs of our you know that our aunties took and you know heads are missing or you know they're cockeyed or you know I don't know it seems to me more difficult to take a photograph like that than just get a nice even balanced photograph but I don't know um, everyone's different aren't they but we've all seen them and you think really what <laughs> okay it's, it's a family photograph but hey um, Learn to put a rectangle around something, and for me, that's composition. My composition might be different to yours. It most likely will be. It, I'm, I'm sure it will be, but but it will be it will be more informed. It will look more balanced, I think, with the way you see the world and the way I see the world. Yeah, maybe two different things, but you get good at putting things into. In, into that shape it's, it's kind of no more difficult than that for me it's for me it's sort of very very you know I think when it comes to photography the technical side of things is not you know it wasn't to begin with anyway it wasn't the most natural thing for me but the way I saw things was I didn't ever have to learn that it was just very, very automatic for me. It was, you know, getting it at the right, you know, uh, getting the right exposure was a little bit more challenging because that means you have to understand the technical aspects a little bit, at least back then when I was starting out before automatic lenses, automatic focus and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but the composition, I could hit all the time, no problem whatsoever. It was just a very, very easy thing for me. Other people are different. The, the technical aspect is very easy for them. The composition, perhaps less so. But everyone can understand and better and improve their sense of composition by just literally lifting the camera. It might sound a bit weird, but if you can make something very banal look quite interesting by putting... A rectangle around something and then if you want throw a little bit of light then if you want introduce a little bit of depth of field you can you know that's it will improve your sense of how you see things um, so yeah just thought I'd kind of throw that one out there um, I you know I wouldn't necessarily say it's important to study paintings and artists it won't ever 
hurt. It won't ever harm you, for sure. But do you want to go and stand in a museum for for four hours a day? You know, it's a wonderful thing to do. You know, if you've got the time. But um, you know, I wouldn't say it's absolutely crucial. But but understanding shapes and understanding light and the way those things come into your viewfinder and how you you know where you position that rectangle the edge of your viewfinder and what you deem appropriate to place within the, within those four lines is is easily obtained if you if you just walk around practice it you know shut that eye off and just see you know there's those directors um when they've got those loops and they're looking and they're seeing what the cameraman's seeing they're looking at the the field uh, 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 the viewing field and the uh, you know is that yeah does that look right does that and that's what it's about that's what they're doing that's what that's what they're seeing is that the place where i want to f you know where I, the angle i want to film it from Am I going to get those components in correctly? You know, they'll maybe have a screen as well so they can have a direct feed of what the cameraman's seeing. But that's basically, that's basically it, composition. Um, it's a beautiful thing when you get it right. And it's, I don't think it's a particularly difficult thing to do. You know, for some people it's about practice or what. Yeah, everything's about practice, isn't it? But um, yeah, I hope I'm not sort of, stating the obvious here um but yeah um <laughs> just another little little thing that is perhaps worth discussing again any thoughts any suggestions um leave them in the box any questions leave them in the box and see you for the next one cheers for now